Now, let's take, yeah, yeah, let's take a, a little time to talk about these timers that we've been working with. So beware, we're going to do a lot with this. And it, it just blows everybody's mind getting all these conversions correct, right? So we'll be doing this many a time. So this idea of a timer, keeping track of time, or what we're going to also use is what's, what's called a pulse width modulation signal, a PWM that varies its duty cycle, the square wave, right? 50% duty cycle. But what if we wanted to make something that was on for 75% of the time and off for 25% of the time? We can use those signals to drive motors, but we'll come to those, we'll come to that. First, let's just talk about a timer. So if you remember uh, in lab, and as you've been doing the homeworks, you have something called something like config timer. CPU, what, timer zero or whatever it is, right? Some function like that. And if you recall, you pass to that config timer zero, 200 megahertz, just a 200, the units was megahertz. This never changed, actually it was a pound defined, wasn't it? If you, that's right, it's a pound defined. If you go look at, it was like CPU frequency or something like that. If you'd look at that, whatever that pound defined was, you'd find that's 200 megahertz. We never want to change that. The clock rate coming into our breadboard is always 200 megahertz, okay? The only thing you change here was the period. And for timer zero, what was the default? I think 10,000, something like that, right? 10,000 microseconds, okay? So with that said, right, we talked about this, our interrupt routine, the CPU timer zero interrupt would be called every 10 milliseconds, wouldn't it, by that? Okay, well, there's something going on inside on making this happen, okay? Let's think about it. So there is a register in, inside this timer peripheral. And we're going to get, Wednesday, we'll really get into this idea of what's a peripheral and what's a register. We'll talk about that a bunch. But there is a register, a special place on this CPU, and the register is called TMR0. Okay? I think it's, it's something exa almost exactly like that. But And then there is another register called the period, P-R-D-0. Okay. Now, what's activating this TMR? It's a 32-bit, it's a you can think of it as a 32-bit integer. It's a count value, okay? And this is all in hardware. Then we've got our 200 megahertz clock, right? So everything in a CPU runs on a clock, doesn't it? To make things happen, everything happens on, let's say, let's say the falling edge, it could be the rising edge, the falling edge of the clock. That's when data gets shifted from here to here and things get added and all this kind of stuff. Everything's happening at a clock rate, okay? So we have this clock going all throughout the processor. Well, one place it's also going is it's triggering or telling this TMR0 register to count. All right? And so TMR starts out at zero first. Okay? And then every edge, and this is really fast, isn't it? One over 200 million seconds, every one over 200 million seconds, TMR gets incremented by one. Just call it magic, whatever you want to call it, uh, it just happens. That's the, that's the life of this TMR register, okay? You can, we're not going to uh, until later on the semester, you can actually divide this down too so that a slower rate comes in here. So if you divide by one, of course, 200 megahertz is coming in. If you divide by two, then... 100 megahertz is the clock rate and all this kind of stuff, right? But for what we need to do, we're never going to use this divide. So let's let's just even erase it for now. We will, That'll become more important when we get to our PWMs, which is coming up. But anyway, so this clock rate, oops, not erase, draw. This clock rate is going into the TMR, in a sense, or being counted by the TMR. So when we see the edge go high, 
This guy goes to one. Another high, now not when we, when the processor, when this TMR sees it go high, increments this to two, and so on. And that's what it just keeps on going up, 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 until it reaches the PRD value. Let's say we set the PRD value to, let's do a different, like five, three, six, seven, or something, just some crazy number, okay? It counts up, 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 every one over 200, uh, millis 200 million seconds, boom, 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 boom. Finally, when it reaches this 5367, it resets back to zero and does it again. So this is it's how high we want, we want it to count up. And then it just goes back to repeating that. Now what also happens is when TMR equals the period value, we get our interrupt. Our function is called, the CPU timer function is called. Okay? So how many seconds have gone by? How often is our function called? When we have 5367 here, well, we would just simply take 5367, multiply it by 1 over 200 million. Does that make sense? And in that way, you are creating a vent, a timer event, that happens at that rate. Now, that config timer function is nice to you. Instead of, this is, I would call this period value down here the raw, the raw value of the time. The unit, what are the units of this? The units of this are 1 over 200 million seconds, isn't it? What we did up here, the config timer is scaling these microseconds for you into a timer value that uh, is in units of 1 over 200 million. You see the difference there? It knows. That's why it asks what frequency we're clocking at, right? It takes that frequency and then converts the 10,000 microseconds to this raw number that the, uh, that the counter counts up to and then boom, calls your function, right? So, for the timer, we don't really care about this conversion. We're just going to use the microseconds. That's a little more clear to us, isn't it? But when we get to that PWM, the PWM timers, that's where we're going to have to think in these raw units. So I just wanted to start the, start the thought there here at the end of the lecture. Okay.